I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. And taken to the Americas, to the Caribbean, to be an enslaved people, what happened here must always be remembered. It cannot be denied. It must be taught. History must be learned. And we must then be guided by what we know also to be the history of those who survived in the Americas, in the Caribbean, those who proudly declare themselves to be the diaspora. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, le segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. And we have to recognize that everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the Lift Act. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African Americans that you would support. But no, if you look at, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. The, it, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparity, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. And we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country. Right? I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No.